Well, let's take this on. We can speak now to Richard Heydarian, who's a political scientist and author of a new book called The Indo-Pacific, Trump, China and the New Struggle for Global Mastery. He joins us now from Manila. Richard, welcome to the programme. Uh, this is a, a spectacular U-turn, isn't it, by the White House? Uh, and it's been enthusiastically received, as we've just heard, by students from across the world. But why this backtrack, do you think? Well, I think we have to keep in mind what has been happening in the U.S. Supreme Court over the past few months or so. I mean, this is supposed to be a conservative-dominated Supreme Court, but the Trump administration has been suffering one defeat after the other, whether on the gender discrimination issue, whether on the DACA issue, uh, and even on, on and in terms of him trying to keep his, you know, transactions, financial transactions secret. He got some uh, uh, kind of a, a setback there in the U.S. Supreme Court. So I think there was a calculation within the Trump administration that they were not going to do well if this really goes to the court. And let's let's keep in mind that the decision to reverse, you know, the U-turn came just before a federal judge in Boston was supposed to look into this case. And we're looking at 20 different states. We're looking at leading universities in the U.S. like MIT and Harvard have been pushing for this case. And let's not forget, we are talking about a million foreign students in the United States and more than $40 billion in revenues raised by that. So I think it has been quite a difficult argument for the Trump administration to make. Nonetheless, I think there's a debate whether this is a cynical election ploy for President Duterte saying, America first, let's keep the foreigners out as much as possible, or whether this is a continuation of Trumpist, uh, you know, tough immigration policy. I think it's really a combination of, of the two elements. Right, because the lawsuits that the universities brought said that the purpose of the policy, from their point of view, was to force, to force schools and universities to reopen, which kind of, it keys in to what Trump wants to do in the States right now. Well, under normal conditions, of course, if you're going to have a student visa, you're supposed to meet certain requirements in terms of in-person attendance. But with the imposition of lockdowns and emergency measures in the United States, that's close to impossible. And you had an extremely troubling uh, phenomenon whereby some of the students were considering to transfer to other places where they could have in-class attendance in order to meet the basic requirements, even though that would have meant risk to their life and then potentially spreading the disease to other people. So I think even on the question of public health, it was going to be a very difficult argument for the Trump administration to make. And, you know, the thing is this, over the past few years, even friends and colleagues of mine coming from Muslim-majority countries, not in the Middle East, but like Indonesia, for instance, they were worried that if they get out of the U.S. for a visit to family, they couldn't come back. And we saw more and more restrictions on students coming from China, from Iran. But, you know, if you look at the foreign students, you have more than 200,000 of them coming from India, more than 50,000 coming from South Korea, more than 30,000 coming from Saudi Arabia. These are students from countries that are very close to the United States. And training the future leaders of this country also means a lot for American super po uh, soft power and its social linkages with these countries. So okay. all of those could be Richard, injected. I'm just, I'm just going to jump the in there. I'm sorry, sorry to jump in. I just want to just ask one more question because we're just running out of time. You mentioned the number of students. 350,000 come from China. And right now uh, we have this head-to-head uh, -head situation with China and the United States. How do you think that's going to play out, this current tit-for-tat that we're seeing? Well, I think for students from certain countries, whether it's Iran and probably Russia, but especially from China, it's going to look bad. I mean, China has the largest amount of foreign students, more than 300,000 in the United States. And we see that there are more and more restrictions on Chinese students, particularly in certain fields, in certain scientific fields that could contribute to military capabilities of China, or in terms of China's edge in, you know, telecommunication and artificial intelligence, among others. So I think that trend will continue regardless of this U-turn, because the U.S.-China competition, that thing, the, the new Cold War between the two superpowers is not going to go away, and it's just going to get worse. But I think regardless of this U-turn by the Trump administration, this is really creating a lot of concerns about people around the world, whether America is really a safe place to study, is this really the leader of the world? So it's going to put a lot of pressure also, if ever, we're going to have a different administration after November All to right. reverse this very negative blow to American soft power and position in the world. Richard, just great to get your perspective on this. Do appreciate it. Uh, that's uh, Richard Hidaran speaking to us from Manila.